Hey, it's Joe Glines, and uh, in this video I'm reviewing the uh, Open Weather Map API. And uh, let's see here. Um, if we come up in here, we can see they have a lot of different um, API calls you can do to get conditions and forecasts and history and air pollution, you know, you name it. Um, let me go back one here. So what was interesting to me in this one, uh, the, the actual code itself is straightforward as far as, hey, I, I have an endpoint. Right, this is my endpoint. Uh, the first one, what was interesting was uh, when I was looking through the documentation. Let me get back to it here. Here we go. Uh, I was, I was uh, trying to look up my location, and and it it, it is suggesting um, for for location, they they recommend um, using your city ID number. This is this is the one that they are um, recommending. Oh yeah, here we go. Um, so, but then they say, okay, you can you can download this sample file, um, and let me show my folder here. After you extract, so this was the file I downloaded, which was four megs, not a big deal. But when you, when you uh, uh, decompress it, it becomes you know twenty nine megs, and then when you look at it, um, let's see if I still have it open here. No, let me let me open it up. Um, it's it's which is fine. It's in JSON format. And of course, you can search through it. But what was interesting was so in Cap I live in Capel, Texas, right? Well, there's I guess this is Capel, Canada, because it's a country. Um, here's Capel in the U.S., but I don't actually know where that is for sure. Um, and notice what line I'm on, line I'm on, right? So if you're in a smaller city, um, you would need to have to know your longitude and latitude, and uh, which I don't know about you, but I don't know that. So what I did was I said, you know what, let me, um, I could have, of course, skipped this next step that I'm going to show you, but what I did was I said, you know, there's this other way I can put in the zip code in your country, and that returned back, um, let me run it. So to save, reload, um, again, so here's my API call. Um, this this should beautify, I'm using this format JSON to, to make it a little bit easier. Read. It should pop up in a GUI, but we'll see. I I was playing with it here. Here we go. So it's a little easier to read here. Um, oh, look at that. I didn't realize it before. So it, it actually returned my longitude and latitude here. ID 804. See, I don't think that's my actual city ID. Um, I wish it was. But oh, oh, look at that. So it is Capel. Um, it did, my zip code did map to that, so maybe this ID is my my actual city. What I did was I, I used Google Maps to get my latitude and longitude, uh, which, and just since I have it, you know, let me, let me grab some of this here. ID, is there any other, why did, that was weird, that should have stayed on top. Um, here's another ID, is this... County. Uh, you know, I think that ID, I, I would think that is more likely to be my city ID. Why is that zero? See, I would think this name, um, this ID here should have been the, the city ID. But let's take a look, alright? So, so I'm going to go ahead and, and reload my script. Oh, there's that one. Okay. I don't need that twice. Um, and I did the second one where I, like I said, I used Google Maps. Uh, oh, where'd it go? To, um, I zeroed in on the spot where I was, and I went in and grabbed this, which is the latitude and longitude. Uh, and then I took that back into my script and did this next one, where I pass it the key value pairs, where I say lat. And this is, I got it from uh, their their website um, right here. So lat equals 30, in their example, lat equals 35, and lon is uh, 139. Uh, but obviously it's much more specific than that. So coming back in here, I pass it the key value pairs of lat. And this this query string builder, right, is going to dump it into um, the latitude and longitude uh, key value pairs for me. So it's passing those parameters. And, and here I have my secure token, uh, which is why I'm not showing what the query string looks like but uh, it passes it. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, 
And now here, this 800, so that's interesting, is that's 804, and that's 800. Clouds, clear sky. I'd almost say that that's, those are two different places. Um, clear sky icon, uh, all right, stations, temp, and I, I have no, this, I don't know what that number, <laughs> it is clearly not 294 degrees or Celsius outside, so I don't know what's going on with that. Um, Speed. <laughs> ID. Now, see, here we go. See how here it has this ID? That I will bet you. And let's actually. Do I still have it open? The city list. Oh, 468, 468, 3217. So this was the my city here, Capel. And if we actually compared. Do I have. I don't have it handy right in front of me here. But this is the Latin launch that they use. Um. My script will have that. Go back to here. Um, so notice they're not. I, they shouldn't be identical, right? The odds of that are small, but nine point point nine five, point nine nine, and minus nine six, and they're at minus nine seven. Uh, but that is getting the. Uh, that is their lat launch. Of course, it doesn't really matter. It's going to roll it up to that um, city, which in this case is Capel. And so now, which I haven't done yet. Um, I should be able to, I'm going to duplicate this, comment it out, let me go back to the documentation, and let me go back and say, okay, now now that I have my city ID, um, let me look at how, here it is, whether ID equals, so it's just ID equals, alright, I think I can remember that, um, so on this one, I'm going to put ID, and I need my city ID, which is right here. And I can get rid of the longitude. Right? So now it's going to pass it. We're going to say ID equals this. And it still passes my app ID and, and token value for that. Um, so save, reload, and run it. And now it should basically be the same data, but now I'm using the app ID. I'm sorry, the city ID to uh, to pull it back. So this 804, I, I am curious what that, maybe that's the region or something. Um, I don't know. But it's, uh, this is the the weather. Again, I don't I don't know what in the world is that. Um, oh, good. And look, it was it was a minimum of 292 and a max of 296. What in the world are they, I don't know. Um, but that's using their, their, uh, their API for getting the weather. Let's take a look here. Close that, and let's say um, API. That's current weather, historical data. Let's see what. Um, wow, a 16-day forecast. Can't imagine how accurate that is. Uh, but so it looks like here, what's nice is uh, by city ID. All I have to do is change the endpoint, right? Um, I, I'm betting. Because I'll bet you everything else gets passed the same. So this is going to be the endpoint. And so forecast, daily forecast. And let's go back. Oh, is that really daily? Anyway, we'll see. All right. I'm going to change. I'm going to duplicate that, comment it out, add in my new endpoint, and run it. What? Oh, you know what? Yeah, their, their documentation doesn't include this part. I don't know why they do that. So, somewhere in here, maybe it's going by, di oh, I bet you this is a time, each one of these is a day, is it incrementing by one, well, maybe it's by 24 hours, um, but I think that's the, each day, the, uh, the values that, um, light rain, light rain, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, so so that's interesting. It's, it returns seven. Um, I was counting how many times I saw uh, this, so it's returned it. It returned seven. It looks like a week's worth. Let's go back to the documentation here real quick and just see. Call sixteen day daily forecast data. Maybe I need to. You can search the forecast by city name. City name. Oh, count number of days returned. 1 to 16. Okay, and then there's the default call 7 days forecast. Um, I bet you if you leave it blank. But 
I'm going to add in. Oh, look at this metric. Oh, look. I didn't realize this. I can return XML. Awesome. Okay, let's uh, let's borrow from this. All right, we're going to go back into our code. Um, and in these parameters here, I'm just going to paste that there for now. Um, so over here, it doesn't matter the order. Um, so I'm going to add in, I think, two, right? I'm going to change the count. Oh, yeah, you know, metric. All right. So mode, I'm going to add mode is XML. Typically, I'd also add one at a time and test it just to make sure I didn't do something crazy, but this is, should be pretty straightforward. Um, CNT, I guess I'm actually in three. I'm going to say 16 and. Oops. And units. Metric, what would it be if it's not metric? Um, I'm blanking. Metrics and. Uh, in, not English, it's not the right. Metric. Metric. List. Format. Oh, units. Standard. Uh, and then there's Imperial. And I, I know, I remember there is a difference between standard and Imperial, but I don't remember what that difference is. Um, so I'm going to put metrics here. Actually, I'm I'm curious what else. Multilingual support. Interesting. So it looks like we could we could pull back the stuff in different languages. Um, let's go ahead and give this a try, though. Uh, that sure didn't like that. But that. Okay. Oh. Oh, I know why. Because because. I switched over to XML. Um, my, of course, my pretty format for JSON doesn't work. So now it's returning XML data. Um, let's let's uh, let's make this XML pretty, right? So um, let me get rid of. Uh, I'll comment it out, and I I don't want to actually display that. Let's uh, use my little script writer here. Uh, response parse XML. I might make it pretty. Oh, I need to. I have this in my library, um, so I don't need to have it here, and I need to update that. But um, I'm going to change this, so this is going to um, it's going to pass s XML. Um, I'm sorry, it's going to pass response data to this function s XML pretty, and it, then it's going to dump it into my site output uh, function. Um, I could have I could have done. I could have moved this up to here, and then passed, you know, added the step where I put it in here. Uh, it's the same thing, right? It was just, hey, you know what? I don't need to do that. So but anyway, let me rerun it here now. Look how much easier that is to read, right? Um, and let's see, did we actually change? Here's a lot launch, right? Where are the temperatures? Um, Precipitation value, wind speed, pressure. Min, oh, temp, temperature day. Two and what in the world? I, I don't understand whether what those numbers represent. <laughs> um, I guess I could try imperial instead of standard, but I, I gotta think standard is the right thing. Um, anyway, we, it looks like we did get. Now we have quite a few more. Um, let me, I am, I'm going to go back, this is, annoys me, I'm curious. Let me go back to, oops, to here, because I suck at typing units format. So standard metric imperial units are available. Temperature Fahrenheit. Oh. Kelvin. Holy crap, who the hell uses Kelvin? Oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I should have remembered that from my chemistry days. Um. Kelvin. Okay, where is units? Standard. Oops. Let me bring in Imperial. Copy. Yeah. Kelvin. Come on. Um, temperature day. Okay. Minimum 81 degrees. Max. Oh boy. Creeping up to 100. Wonderful. Um, that's. I think far out. Where is it? Oh, here's the dates. Now that's much easier to read. 
Uh, so the 25th, which is today, uh, heavy intensity rain. Yay. Well, we had a bunch yesterday. Uh, pressure temperature day. 72. Min of 63. That's crazy. It's not getting down to 63 here. I sure don't think so. Uh, max is 72. Okay, now they're, they are being crazy. Um, anyway, so this is how you would parse the, uh, the data and, you know, look up different things. And it was a good experiment of how you play around with APIs. Thanks.